Over the past few years, the Fed has not been a particularly popular institution, um, both because it was um, blamed for, uh, blamed in part for um, creating conditions that fostered the financial crisis. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve has been subject to a new scrutiny over the last few years as lawmakers and experts look to the central bank for answers about the dismal economy. Guided by Chairman Ben Bernanke, the Fed, a collection of 12 federal banks, is tasked with providing the nation with a safe, stable monetary system. That's often easier said than done, notes Economic Studies co-director Karen Dynan as she takes a closer look. Karen, part of what the Federal Reserve does is it watches economic trends. Now, having said that, did it see the economic crisis that we're now climbing out of on the horizon? The Fed uh, is watching what's going on in the economy all the time, has an extensive uh, staff that watches economic trends and tries to forecast the economy. But forecasting is a difficult business. And the Fed um, staff, like all forecasters, they aren't perfect and uh, they don't always see where the economy is going. Uh, a particularly vivid example is in the middle part of the last decade when uh, there was a, a credit boom and a house price bubble that uh, led to the financial crisis and uh, then the deepest recession uh, in many years. Um, there are probably um, several oversights on the part of the Fed and other regulators in the period uh, leading up to the house to the to the financial crisis. There were indications that house prices were rising very rapidly, but people thought that um, those increases might be justified. And from the Fed's point of view, they weren't sure there was a, a bubble, and um, they also don't have particularly good tools for dealing with bubbles. What has the Federal Reserve done? to help us get out of this recession? First of all, there were a variety of um, market, variety of parts of financial markets that essentially seized up or threatened to seize up during the financial crisis. And the Fed uh, opened various uh, programs that provided, in most cases, provided liquidity to these or, or some sort of guarantee to these portions of the financial markets. The other thing the Fed's done that's been very important is that the Fed aggressively cut interest rates during the financial crisis. And um, because of those cuts in interest rates, the recession has been, um, was much less severe than it otherwise would have been. And um, even after it uh, essentially took its policy rate uh, all the way down to zero, so it essentially maxed out on its traditional tool for conducting monetary policy, the Fed developed new tools. So for example, the Fed has been engaging in something called quantitative easing, which is aimed at bringing down long-term interest rates. Let's go back for a minute to the Fed's prescribed duties. One of the key things it does, you say, is, is it sets monetary policy. Explain that, please. By law, the Fed is supposed to conduct monetary policy so as to preserve price stability. That means to keep inflation under control and to uh, attain maximum employment. Uh, monetary policy is set by the Federal Open Market Committee, which uh, consists of the Fed's uh, seven governors, along with the presidents of the various Federal Reserve banks. And uh, this, these, these people, they meet um, about every eight weeks. They assess what's going on with the economy. And they make decisions about whether the economy uh, needs uh, policy that will um, increase growth or whether the economy is overheating and needs policy that restrains growth. The Federal Reserve functions largely unfettered, but there is talk about more congressional oversight. What's your feeling about that? That would not be a, a good idea. It is very important to um, conducting monetary policy that the Fed is able to um, to make its decision without decisions without political interference. The reason being that um, political considerations could lead the Fed to um, to to favor uh, employment growth, um, you know, a boom in the economy, over controlling inflation. 
and um, and that in the long run <laughs> would lead to um, to high inflation, which would be then very hard to undo. How does the Federal Reserve impact on everyday Americans? Ultimately, the Fed is trying to to influence the conditions that face um, Americans. So. Um, Right now, for example, the rate of unemployment is, is extremely high. Um, the Fed has, uh, has cut interest rates, and they're continuing with uh, programs like their quantitative easing program, which is also supposed to reduce interest rates, um, so as to spur spending. It makes borrowing cheaper, and it uh, induces households and and firms to spend and uh, eases financial conditions in other ways. But the idea is that that spending will then lead businesses to think that growth is going to be stronger in the future, and it will lead them to hire more, uh, which will create jobs for people who don't have jobs. So even though we hear so much about um, the Fed and how it affects financial markets, we need to remember that that's just the channel through which the Fed is trying to um, to, to change the economy, but the ultimate goal is to make life better for uh, Americans. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, or iPhone, go to brookings.edu mobile.